So for years, I led student ministry at churches, and I had the privilege of walking with students through those crucial years, 6th through 12th grade. And uh, I remember talking to a lot of different families during that time, but I remember one family in particular, and they had a daughter who was making some poor choices. And her dad came to me and told me about what was going on in her life, and he said, my daughter, she seems depressed, um, doesn't seem to have a lot of direction in her life, little to no motivation, and to make matters worse, she has a loser for a boyfriend. It's really bad. And her dad was just at a loss, didn't know what to do, and so tried to get her to change direction with no success. He tried to threaten her nothing. He tried to bribe her, nothing. He tried to make life difficult for her. It was not working. And one day he sat down with his friend and his friend gave him some advice that really changed his life, his daughter's life as well. He said, you know, it seems like your daughter is living out the best story that she's been given. Maybe if you want her life to change, maybe you need to give her a better story. And a better story. That, that was an interesting idea, an interesting thought. And there was something about that that stuck with the dad. And he started praying. He started thinking about it. He started wondering what maybe God might have him do with that. And so he decided to take off work. And him and his daughter went on a mission trip to Haiti. And while um, she was there, she began to get a sense on this mission trip of a bigger story for her life, a better story, a bigger purpose that she could live out in her life. And when she got home, her, didn't, her dad didn't have to ask her. She dumped the loser boyfriend. And over time, what happened is she was living into this new purpose that she found in her life. If it didn't fit into her new story, she dropped it. That's just kind of what she did. Now, all of us are living out a story. Some of us don't realize that, so we don't think about it like that, but it's true. And oftentimes, we don't think about our lives as stories because stories kind of seem, well, exciting, interesting. Uh, they have meaning and purpose. And so often, our lives, to be honest, it doesn't seem like that's true. And what happens is we step back and we ask what is the purpose of this thing called life? And we all ask this question. Some people ask the question quietly as they go about their lives. Some people kind of shout the question out in the way that they live their lives. But we all ask that question. What is the purpose of life? Now, one of the things that I love about the Bible is that it's so honest about the questions that we ask in life. It doesn't gloss over the questions. It doesn't pander. It doesn't oversimplify the Bible is real. It's actually really real. Um, if you're asking tough questions in your life, um, you're going to find a lot of people wrestling with those same questions in the pages of the Bible. And one of my favorite examples of that is a book that we really don't talk about that often. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. The book was uh, likely written by the king and um, a, the great king, the son of King David, Solomon. Now, Solomon is considered, apart from Jesus, to be the wisest man who ever walked the earth. When God asked Solomon as he started his life as a king, um, well, you can have anything. What would you choose, Solomon? And Solomon thought about it, and he didn't choose wealth. He didn't choose power. He didn't choose a long life. No, he, choose, he chose wisdom. And because he chose wisdom, God said, I'm going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you everything else as well. He lived an extraordinary life. He was rich. He was powerful beyond imagination. It's actually kind of hard for us to get our heads around how powerful and how, and how wealthy he actually was. In the book of Ecclesiastes, he kind of, Solomon summarizes his life and how he feels about it. And so how does one of the wisest, richest, most powerful men in all of history, how does he describe his life? We're going to find it here in Ecclesiastes chapter one. It says this, meaninglessness, meaningless, says the teacher, utter meaningless, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? I remember the first time I read this and I thought, wow, like I, 
this is crazy. Is this actually in the Bible? This is kind of, this is kind of wild. And I remember thinking like, it's strange that this is in the Bible, but it's also refreshing and raw. And it starts right off the bat. And Solomon says so often in life, it seems like life is meaningless. It feels like it's meaningless as we go through life. In fact, this word meaningless is so important to the book. It's like the central thing that he talks about in the book. It's in the book 38 different times. And the original Hebrew word um, here is actually kind of hard to translate. It's a little elusive. Some translations uh, say vanity or vanity of all vanities or emptiness. I might describe the word like this. It's like this, like when you, when you go outside and it's cold out and you breathe out and you see that breath kind of escape from your lungs and it's there and it's gone and it's so fast and it's like, it's a vapor. It's, it's an instant before you know, it's just like that. And, and that is what life is like, according to the book of Ecclesiastes. Now here's, here's where the story turns though. Because I think one of the main ideas of the darkness and the questioning of Ecclesiastes, and there is darkness and questioning in Ecclesiastes, the the main idea is this, is that all this seeming meaninglessness and pain and questioning and darkness and doubt should actually lead us to look to something higher. And, And so all this stuff, all these experiences that we have in life, they can either point us to hopelessness, or they can point us to a hope that isn't of this world. Because I believe that what Ecclesiastes says is true. It's actually painfully true. This message that everything is meaningless under the sun. In fact, this phrase under the sun, um, it's key to understanding the entire message of this book And he says it again and again, under the sun. Everything is meaningless under the sun. And if you're only looking here under the sun, it's going to seem meaningless. And in other words, if you're still confused about what on earth life is about, maybe you need to look somewhere higher than the earth. In fact, that is actually the import, the point of the entire book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon is basically saying, listen, you can search for meaning your whole life. I've done it. And if you search for meaning your whole life and you only look here on this earth, you aren't going to find it. In, in fact, in order to truly find meaning, he would say, you need to look to God. And see, the truth is that we, we all have an amazing story to live out. The problem is that we so often try to find meaning and to try to find the purpose of our story under the sun, like on this earth. And we all find the same thing if we're honest. If we only look there, it's going to feel meaningless. But the message of the Bible is ultimately a message of hope. Yeah, the Bible is honest. It's real. It doesn't pretend life is great all the time, but ultimately it's a message of hope. It's a, it's a gritty, transformative, surprising hope that we find in scripture. I love this book, this uh, verse in the book of Ephesians that captures that kind of hope. If you're looking for a better story to live out, I think this verse points to that. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. If you are feeling like, if you're wondering if life is meaningless, then you're in good company. The wisest man on earth asked that exact same question. And he found, and I believe that you can find, that life is, has meaning. It has purpose. You have a story. It's just that your story is bigger than this world. And this verse speaks to that truth, right? I mean, there's so much profound kind of life-changing truth in this one passage. It says, we are God's handiwork. Like, do you know what that means? That's crazy, right? You were created by God and God doesn't make mistakes, And not only were you created, but you were created with a purpose. 
to do good works. I would say another way of saying that is that you were created with a story. You were created with a purpose and a plan to do good things. Now, maybe you hear that and you think to yourself in your heart, I kind of doubt that that's true. Like, as I look around where I am in my life right now, uh, if this is God's story for me, maybe you're thinking, I want my money back. Um, But if you're moving right now through darkness, through depression, through pain or doubt, don't judge your story based on one chapter. Don't base your story on the chapter that you're in in your life right now. If we judge stories based on one single chapter, we're going to miss a lot of really great stories in our life, right? And so the question isn't, where are you right now? The question is, where is God taking you? Um, The question is, how do you want the story written from this day forward in your life? Because I believe that part of God's heart is wanting to meet us and our passions and our love and the purpose that he created for each of us. And I believe that God has put passion and purpose in your heart. And he wants to meet you exactly where you are and, and, and watch you come alive with excitement for the future that he has for you. And he wants to meet you right there as you take a, a step towards a better story with him. And so let me ask you, what do you want in life? Like what plan or purpose or calling do you feel like God might be writing on your heart? Now, what is one small step that gets you closer to that? Um, a great author, Frederick Buchner, once said it like this. I love this quote. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. So what is that for you? Because you find that, and I have a feeling you might be living a better story. One day, what's going to happen is our our lives are going to end, and the credits are going to roll. And so often, you know, life is so, so short. It's like a breath. It's, it's here and it's gone. It's so short, and yet it's so precious. We have one little life. And whether you realize it or not, you are at the start of a great story. And because your life is being authored by the author of life, and you are God's handiwork. You're the child of the king. You're a co-heir with Christ. You've been created to do good works, and he has written a story on your heart. Now take one small step towards that story, a better story today.